to Tokyo as Ho Jose Cornelius Eduardo, the centre referee, calls them to attention. This one, the semi-final in the under 68 kilograms. They will know that Bradley Sinden of Great Britain awaits. They couldn't care about that just now because they've got their, their hands and feet full at the moment. Denisenko of Russia, the man in red, Abagosh in blue and straight away, both men sharing a few welcoming kicks. Footwork from Sinden was vital in that win against goal Joel Gonzalez. Abagosh is noted for his dancing style. Likes to move around. Denisenko and that Russian mindset, very calm, composed. Big punch from Abagosh. Not much power on it though. I think if Bradley came up against Denisenko, they're very similar. So I think it potentially could be a cagey match, but Denisenko is so experienced, so strong, so tall for that weight group as well. But Abagosh for me is just is just looks I like watching him. He's got great technique. He always does something quite exciting, so he's someone that the young athletes really look up to at the moment. Like kinda it's, it's funny thing to say, but you know, Tazagul Serve was the generation before. This is now the equivalent, the, the spinning style, the exciting style. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a mix there, Abagosh, and he's kind of been able to adapt to this modern game but still keeping it quite exciting. So again that's the reason why you know the young athletes are looking up to him as well. Yeah, and looking up on the scoreboard, it's good times for Denisenko. The reputation and the quality of the Jordanian, well, the Russian just keeping his game plan. Good double kick there, the lesser spotted double kick in Taekwondo. Good to see that back. Headshot just missing. And as we creep into the last 30 seconds, well, the Russians had a good start here. Yeah, I think the way that Denisenko scored then was a quite, is the way that it's a little bit easier to score that way, where if you put your leg up and the athlete falls into your leg, it's quite an easy way to score, and I think that's exactly what just happened there again as well. No, you're absolutely right. Timing is of the essence, letting your opponent fall into you as we fall towards the last 10 seconds of what's been a evenly contested first round. Back kick attempt there from Abagosh. Followed with a, a chop kick block. I don't know if I've ever seen that one before. But we're going to get a chance to catch our breath here. No points in terms of the last minute there. But a couple each. Evenly poised. And Abagosh, the only thing, he's coming back from injury. You know what that's like to, to get that momentum again. Especially when you've got that creative style. Yeah, I think he obviously relies on being quite dynamic. So when you're injured, you know, that is quite difficult to find what am I going to do now that, that that part of me has gone so he is going to struggle a little bit but you know it's still 2-2 two -two, so and it's anyone's game and um, very similar the way they both scored and I think I think Denisenko seems like he's got a little bit of a game plan there obviously Abagosh is trying to trying to go in with the punches and Denisenko just lifting his leg up there falling onto the kick not and making it quite easy for him to score I'll see you know I wonder if he's going to try that again we will wait in eager anticipation, not for too much longer. Ringside seats, wherever you are in the world, it's a great pleasure to have you with us. We're here in the Copper Box Arena for the third Grand Prix of the season. That's the voice of Sarah Stevenson, Britain's first ever world champion and Olympic medalist, giving us the expert analysis so far as both men move into an open stance this time. Trying to go forward with that little cut down the stairs there. Denisenko. It's a two-pointer though from the Russian Abagosh rushing in, leaving a little space. And it is good footwork from Alexei Denisenko as he opens a, a useful little lead here at the start of the second round. I, th I think Denisenko has really studied how to score on these body armors as well because it, to the back, if you see they're both standing in that stance, which we call the open stance, that is the easiest part of the body armor to score. So they're both trying to flick to the back, but I think... Denisenko's has got the edge a little bit there. Yep, he certainly does. As you see, the game plan, and he's got the edge, certainly on the scoreboard as well. But a little bit of an impasse in this second round. Both men just slowing down, saving up their energy for the, the final surge here in this second period of the semis. A minute to go. A little hook kick around the corner from Denisenko, just keeping Abagosh busy. course you can catch the atmosphere the tension there just in that silence both fighters not really wanting to commit I think the referee is going to be called in here a little technical dispute was it a kick to the leg 
it's well, a technical some, error. Yeah, a technical error yeah. on the scoreboard. Someone's obviously pulled out a plug somewhere. As we focus in there on the video review jury, of course, in Taekwondo, they make sure, yeah, you can see there, just make sure the head guard is working, electronic head guards. Brought in after a certain scoring controversy in Beijing 2008. I don't know. Oh, let's not talk about we'll it. Leave that for a, <laughs> leave that for the lunch break. <laughs> That's a little break for both fighters here. It is really good now that this the screen actually tells you when there's an error. I think when they first, you know, brought the electronic scoring out a few years, you know, the coach might have to shout and say, you know, it's not working. Can we test? And now, you know, the the electronic system will tell you when something's not working, which is so much better and so much more fluid. You know, although we have to stop here, you know, it's potentially, it's not going to deem as unfair to any athlete. Absolutely, no question. Just making sure that the technology is working. You don't want to be working and hard and kicking away there and getting no value for it. And this is a tense time now as we have a little look at some of the, the action so far. But when you're stuck there in the middle, Sarah, and there's an impasse, are you thinking your game plan? Are you just concentrating on your breathing? Are you thinking what to do next? Um, I think sometimes you are just, because you've already done a lot of thinking, and I think at this point you're just waiting for it to start again. Um, for me, certainly, I don't remember thinking too intensely about much, really, depending on where it was in the match um, and how tired you are. So it just depends, really. I think they've, you know, they've done all the hard work now. It's just that, OK, let's fix it and crack on. Well, speaking of fixing it and cracking on here, hard work on the sprint through there from the technology department, just making sure they've got two fresh headgears and they're making sure that the scores were as they were. This is a little technical error in the proceedings, as can happen. But it should be rectified very shortly indeed. Just to let you know, of course, the winner of this will go up against Bradley Sendon of Great Britain. And speaking of British interest, Lauren Williams coming up next and she will go against Paige McPherson, a fighter that you know well, Sarah. Yeah, we, me and Paige fought, well, that was actually my last ever in London. fight, actually, when you think about it. Oh, it's quite emotional. In here, yeah, in London, not in this arena, but in London at the Olympics. Um, so, yeah, I mean, she, she was probably the only one that wasn't seeded that we probably were a little bit, not, we don't really want to fight her. She's probably one of the better ones that were up and coming. And not to take it away from Paige, because she was brilliant that day, you know, to come away with the bronze medal. I wasn't... Well, you were coming in from cruciate ligament yeah. surgery, hadn't fought, hadn't trained. Yeah. hadn't fought in a year, had, um, a, you know, um, ACL reconstruction and had also, you know, personal tragedy. So, sure. um, yeah, it, it was an amazing fight for me just to be at the Olympics was you know w was just the triumph for me because it's not always about winning the medals every athlete here every Olympic athlete has a story um, and you don't always see those stories you just see the medals um, but sometimes being there or trying to compete in any sport is just just as good for that person as it is to win no question about it and wise words when you've scaled the heights well you can also appreciate the lows as well and of course that experience vital. Both men have had their share of trials and tribulations as well. Abagosh winning that Olympic Games. But since then he's been off the boil a little bit. A couple of bronze medals here and there in the open circuits. But not too much success in the Grand Prix. So trying to find his momentum again. And Alexei Denisenko, well, a silver then Moscow in his home Grand Prix. I wonder if they're going to send out to Moscow for batteries for this head guard. Certainly has taken a little bit longer than I'm sure they hope, but um, hopefully it yeah. looks like we might be testing the system again and looking to start. Yep, as you say, we should be back in business. Head guards to test body armors likewise. And the only head that matters is who is ahead at the moment, and it will be a chance for Dennis Henko to try and get that momentum back. We mentioned and it is, of course, 4 2 to Denisenko, who has that momentum. A big break there in that second round. Both men have got to now get on the move. And Abagosh trying to fire that little hook kick under the body protector and into the last 30 seconds here. Denisenko's legs are just so long. You know, he can kind of, he can, it's very, very similar to Bradley. So, again, like I said, if he gets the final, it's very interesting. 
but a sneaky little shot there from Abagosh, finding the gaps, going high, uh, faking high, and then going to the body again. Like I said before, to the back. Both of them. Yeah, the both back, of them yeah. scoring round the back and pulling himself back into the match now. Ahmad Abagosh, as we reach the end of the second round, six points apiece, and lots to ponder here. Denisenko had the lead for a lot of that one, and it was a very much elongated round. I think they'll need this rest really. They had a, a, yeah. a good couple of minutes standing talking to each other. It's almost like they're going to start again, so they're going to be quite fresh for this round. But just at the end there, it seemed to look like they both were finding their way of how, how to score on each other. So um, potentially round three could be a little bit more exciting or at least more shots, but we shall see. We will indeed. Ringside seats here. Wherever you're joining us from, great to have you, of course. And two more days of Grand Prix action. And lots of home interest as well. Also, in tonight's proceedings, Mahama Cho going in the men's heavyweights later on. We'll get a chance to look forward to this one, but looking forward to a shot at the final here. Alexei Denisenko against Amar Abagosh. You can see for yourself the score. Well, the Mayor of London sign is there. Who's going to be the king of the ring? Denisenko on the back foot into that open stance. The hook kick round the corner. Dex it will take the gam, John. Definitely more more action right from the start. Again, like I said, they're both thinking. You know what? I think I've, I think I've found a way how to score. And oh, unlucky. Yep, getting close with that one. But of course, the gam, John makes the difference. Denisenko flicks one up over the shoulder. Got close with that head shot. Not enough power on it. And there's the body kick this time. Lands it clean. Three point gap now. The Jordanian jumps into the lead. And too much defensiveness there on the back foot. Jose Eduardo Cornelius, the referee, not happy with that. And likewise, the coach not happy with the decision. Yeah, he's going to try and take that Gamjung off there. Um, but it's difficult now. It's very, very difficult to to protest anything, um, there's a lot of very, very good rules, but sort of some grey areas, but I suppose that's like in, in a lot of sports, but like I said, it is it is in a really, really good place. Yep, no question about it, the technological adaptations allowing for fairness, but also, as Nadis Tavares of Puerto Rico has a little chat there with Barbara Mari and the referee, just to make sure that they're getting this one right, they want the gam joint invalidated for the reason of, I think, going backwards and not fighting, not engaging? Yeah, for me it was, um, yeah, definitely kicking below the waist. Um, you know, if you hold your leg up and not really show any intent, um, or, and it's below the waist, it always has to be up and with some intent if you're not actually connecting. Yep, checking a bit low. And the referee, well, this is the bone of contention here, and it's quite pivotal. That was deemed as, you know, lifting your leg up and not actually with, with, with any intent. Um, it doesn't look so low, but we'll see. Yeah, we certainly will, and it could be important to Gamjohn to bring it to a two-point game rather than a three-point advantage at the moment. Barbara Marin shaking her head there. Let's see what the adjudication is. Nadis Tavares says it's successful, and the Gamjohn is invalidated. So her instincts were correct. And that was very tough when you're a referee, when you actually do get something wrong. Because um, you're quite clear, they could see that it wasn't below the waist, but it wasn't actually with intent. So, you know, maybe you just misunderstood that a little bit. Sure, but it's like anything. The coaches will get it wrong, the athletes will make a mistake. Even in commentating, say that we might make a yeah. mistake. I mean, it hasn't happened yet. Not yet, but there is There's still time. <laughs> Plenty of time. And not much time left in this third round. There's a nice little body shot, even things up. Nine points apiece. Abagosh scores one of his own. As Sarah Stevenson told us, down the stretch, the action will pick up and picking up a nice little double kick there. All to play for. 11 points apiece. There's a nice shot from Abagosh. It's really coming into play now. Like again, they're both a little bit more open because they're trying to risk taking shots. And Dennis Enko, for me, is really trying to push the, those doubles in that we don't really get to see that often now. But the sneaky little shots with the hook, with the heel and round the back uh, are paying off for Abagosh. Yep, they most certainly are indeed. Abagosh living up to his reputation. Big back leg counter on the way through. Tries to spin for a back kick. He's fallen in the act of doing so. So obviously he'll take a gamge on for that. Is he going to try and play the old I'm injured card? 
Well, he can't really do that. He needs to get up. He needs to fight. Well, he threw that back kick. Looked to take a sore one on the Achilles tendon on the way through. So, some running repairs from the medical team. But talk about running the rule over this one. 15-13. And all of those points, as you rightly predicted, Sarah, yeah. in that last 30-second flurry. Yeah, I think, again, you could just see that it, that was going to happen. But you can say something on commentating and then it could have been the most boring round you've ever seen. You never That's know. true. But I, you know, but, it, but I was right. You were right, so claim it and own it. <laughs> I will claim it, I will own that, and let's just hope he can carry on and give us some more action because it is very, very close. Yep, and he's also close and he's to probably being able get a to continue. Jump. If he does continue, it should be 15-14. Yep, I wonder if it will be fit to continue. Well, the World Taekwondo Federation doctor, Chung Won Che, saying that he's fit to continue, as is Abagosh, a redoubtable warrior, and as you called it rightly, the Gamjon will be given, and that will pull it back to a one-point game here, all to play for, into the last 30 seconds now. Alexei Denisenko, one point down, trying to push forward, goes with a little cut around the corner. He's really working for him, the kicks around the back, but as he does, you can see Abagosh really puts his arm around the, around the back to stop Denisenko from scoring. Uh, which leaves his front open, so we'll see if Denisenko can use his back leg to try to score. Well, jumping for the doubles there, trying to land Denisenko. Abagosh doesn't want to fall, lands a big body shot, and he's live one leg out there. Is he going to take the gamge on for it? Well, a lot happy with it. Into the last seven seconds now. Alexei Denisenko points down. Abagosh. Well, it all points to a victory for the Jordanian. He will take that Gamjon all day. And he will kill the clock. He couldn't care less. And Alexei Denisenko vested in the last seconds. There will be another Gamjon. But Ahmad Abagosh marches on to the final where he will meet Bradley Sittenden of Great Britain. What a way to end that fight there. Denisenko gave it all he had but Abagosh just that quality at the end he was at the end just those underneath as we would call a cut underneath um, you know one player bringing the leg out the other person trying to go underneath um, two of those you know four points falling on the floor a couple of times you know you're still you're still up 